Welcome to Art Spot Online, the Tampa Museum of Art's art making activity series for children and families. Together we'll learn about a work of art at the Tampa Museum of Art and get inspired to create a new work of art. Today's Art Spot activity is sponsored by Hillsborough County, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, Tico Energy, and Wells Fargo. Hi, I'm Anthony, Studio Programs Coordinator at the Tampa Museum of Art, and today I'm joined by Jen Miller, a Tampa artist, and we're here in Skyway 2021. And today we're looking at some of Jen's sculptures. They look like useful, functional tools, these sort of paint brushes or makeup brushes, uh, or maybe some sort of ceremonial brush of some sort. Um, but these are all brushes that you've all made completely from scratch, right? That's correct. So I make every element by hand. Uh, brushes are essentially three parts. You have the handle, which is made of wood. Uh, you have the ferrule, which is actually the part that attaches the bristles to the handle. Those are made out of leather and sterling silver, and the bristles are made out of natural and synthetic fibers. As an artist, I feel like I'm in a video game and I've encountered an item that I'm like not a high enough level to use, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can you talk about like what you're thinking about when you're trying to make them look fancy? Well, I think it's really important to think a lot about how things are made and how we interact with everyday objects. By disrupting the way that you use them, it makes you think about how you would use them kind of just unconsciously. Yeah, and like you said, how they were made. Right, so in talking about how these things are made and since we're looking at your work today, I thought it'd be really great if you could sort of show us the basics of how you could kind of put a brush together and maybe we can figure out how to make one out of everyday household objects. I would love to, let's do it. Okay, great, let's go down to the Golding Shear classroom. All right, so now we're down in the Golding Shear classroom and Jen, you and our friend Gary here are gonna help us to figure out how to make some, some brushes out of some everyday household materials. So what we're gonna do is source our materials for our brushes. What we need is something to make a handle, we need something to make a ferrule, and we need something to make the bristles. So we're gonna use dowels to make our handles. And the next thing that we'll need to do is to make the ferrule. So we need to make sure that the ferrule fits onto the brush so that our bristles can fit into our ferrules. Gotcha. And the ferrule, that's the thing that fits on the brush. Yeah. And then the bristles go into that. And those are mostly um, silver, right, in your sculptures? So upstairs? in my sculptures, they are made out of sterling silver, okay. but traditionally they're made out of brass or copper. Oh, okay. So not as good as yours. Not as good. Okay. <laughs> and today we're going to make them out of polymer clay. Okay, great. So the first thing that we need to do is grab a little bit of clay. Okay. And nice. we are going to just roll it out into a tiny slab. So I'm gonna use my dowel, make it a little bit wider, a little bit longer. And you can trim the edges, make it nice and square, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Like this is, this is great. And all you wanna do is wrap it around your dowel that you're using as your brush handle and just kind of make sure it fits. You can kind of just mash it into itself? Yeah. yeah. And if it's tight on there, you can just roll it on the table, um, but it should slide right off. And that's all you need. Oh, I understand. So rolling it does makes it kind of skinnier, so it comes, yeah. oh, cool. That's all you need. And then you would bake that, and that's how you make a ferrule. And you have some that are already baked, right? So I do. So we can kind of fast forward in time. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's like... So now that we have our, our handle and our ferrule, so you can choose one of these ferrules to use, I think I will use this little twisty one. Oh man, the twisty one actually kind of screws on. Yeah, it does. They fit pretty well. Plus they look fancy and you know I like fancy things. Yeah, yeah. So we have the ferrule and we have our... Our handle. Handle. I want to say wand. Okay, we have the ferrule, we have our handle. Um, and now we have to create the bristles, right? That's correct. So... <laughs> Found this old stuffed animal, right? And I thought we could kind of cut off some of these. These things reminded me of, of bristles on brushes. Yeah, they're actually really similar to what I use in my studio to make my own brushes. Okay, cool. We'll grab our friend right here. And you just kind of want to pick an area where the fur is the longest. And we're going to cut little chunks off or little tufts off. Um, just give them a, a little bit of a haircut. Um, so you kind of just section off an area. Kind of pull it as taut as possible. Trim it off just like that. Uh, you may need multiple tufts 
to kind of make sure it fills the ferrule. Oh, so is that bottom part the part that's gonna be facing out? Yeah, so oh, okay. as you can see, it already looks like a brush. And doing this kind of helps make it all the same kind yeah. of removes like any kind of shorter ones, bits shorter or loose bits. ones. There tends to be loose ones right at the base. Okay. And um, what you can do is kind of twist it to see how thick it actually is. And it should be about the same thickness of your handle. So what we need to do is we need to tie off the end. So I have a couple different types of string. Um, I have some waxed thread, which is really easy to work with. I prefer to work with sewing thread. Um, so I have that. Pretty much any string will work. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the yarn for this. You want something that's a little bit thinner and that you're able to pull fairly taut. Okay, um, yeah, that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is put some scissors and I'm gonna cut off a length of string. Do you need help? Do you want me to hold that while you tie it or do you have like kind of a method? Or you're just good at it? Um, I usually hold it in my teeth. Okay. <laughs> which might be kind of weird. Maybe I will have you hold it. So With my teeth? <laughs> so I'll just hold the string with one hand. It's nice to have some tension on it. Oh, gotcha, okay. And what you do is you just wrap it tightly. And then you want to just tie a couple knots in it. That's my little, my little fur bundle. So the next thing that you want to do is trim off any excess thread. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And then you also want to trim off any excess fibers at the top. So be careful not to cut your string. The next thing to do will be to attach all of these together permanently. And you just want to use a little drop of glue. What kind of glue is that? This is just mixed media adhesive. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the inside of my ferrule and work my bristles in there. I like to spin it a little bit just to make sure that it's in there really well. And you made a paintbrush. I wanna try. <laughs> Man, that looks, again, really, really, it's just with this basic stuff, surprisingly. Um, like legit. So I forget, did you do it kind of on the sides? I did, right? yeah, just, just towards the base of it. Okay. Yep. And then attach the ferrule. Would um, just kind of basic PVA Elmer's glue Yeah, absolutely, work? any glue would work. Hot glue works well. Um, I tend to use uh, an epoxy resin. Oh, sure. Um, you, you don't really want to use a water-based glue because if you use the brush and then you try and wash it, the water will degrade the glue. Man, exciting. That looks so good. They do look good. So the next step would really be to cover it in gemstone. So you know what? I have a little bit of a surprise for you. Check under your seat. Oh my goodness. Actually, it's over there. Let me grab it really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to just have just such a basic brush, right? After the, the, just the completely fabulous ones that we were looking at upstairs. So I found just a bunch of like semi-precious stones, little rhinestones. My favorite. Okay, cool. So let's get decorating. Man, this is already looking so good. I really want to use it, but I kind of don't want to use it because I don't want to ruin it. You can actually use it just like a regular paintbrush. The materials are really similar to how professional brushes are made, so they're absolutely usable. Do another color on the back. Wait, what do you call the tiny? Those are? R rhinestones? They are rhinestones. But I, I think the act of putting rhinestones on something is called bedazzling. Oh, sure. I think that's the scientific term. <laughs> All right, Jenna, we're both done, right? I think so. Super amazing. I mean, almost as good as the ones upstairs, right? <laughs> but um, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about your work and showing us how to like put a brush together. I'm like really super impressed with what we both did, but me especially, I can't believe mine looks <laughs> half as decent as it actually does. Um, if you wanna see Jen's work in person, it's on view right now during the Skyway 2021 exhibition. And again, thank you so much. Thanks, Anthony, I had fun. Me too.
Thank you for making art with the Tampa Museum of Art today. If you enjoyed today's activity, please click the thumbs up button to like our video and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes. Plan your visit to the Tampa Museum of Art for a fun day of art by visiting our website, tampamuseum.org. We'll see you next time.